So it's on that last triplet of the first bar. To be honest, that might not really matter. You can, you know, it's one of those intros also. Uh, whenever, you know, when it's quite obvious as you're coming in on the E7 for me and everybody just listens for that and comes in. But I just wanted to find a way for myself where I could actually have a counting if need be. So I just count the first four, uh, four beats just as beats. I don't always count them as triplets. I'm counting in my head. And then, so one, two, three, four, one, two. And it's, it's like that. Uh, so I hope that's not sort of just too much blabbering for you. Um, right, so yeah, eighth fret, fifth fret, first string, eighth fret, fifth fret, second string. Then we have here the eighth fret of the third string. And this is one of those notes, you know, when we look at it, in relation to the blues scale. It's actually our blue note, the, um, the, the flat five. And sometimes this note, depending on the guitar, depending on the pressure you put, it, you can actually, even just by fretting it, it can put, put it a, a little bit sharp. Um, now I kind of hear just a slight little bend, I've written on the tab like a quarter note bend, but it's not even that. It's just a kind of a little push. But then we um, play fifth fret, second string, fifth fret, first string, and do a kind of a follow through. I think maybe at the last moment I kind of take. So we're just bending that, um, like I say, just a, a tiny little bit. I kind of let it roll into the second note. And then um, we're in this position, pull off from the eighth fret to the seventh fret on the third string. And then fifth fret picked on the third string, the seventh fret picked on the, on the uh, seventh fret fourth string. Sometimes, so obviously we just fret the whole chord. And I'm kind of playing the first, um, like for the first strike, the, f uh, the fifth, the fourth, and the third strings. And then for the second part, the fourth, third, and second strings. but not thinking too much, just I'm kind of resting my pick and just letting that do all the work, really. A little bit muted to get a little bit of, little bit of pop. And then kind of a little bit muted um, on the low E string to open E's. Then second fret low E, fourth fret low E, and then into a into an A7. Fifth fret, uh, sixth string, seventh fret, fifth fret, sixth string, seventh fret, fifth string, um, fifth fret on the fourth string, and sixth fret on the third string. You know, maybe the other notes will kind of ring through anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of going into that kind of idea. Or maybe just um, Eddie did a lot of just... Although he played the chords. We'll look at... I'm going to look at some Eddie Cochran techniques. Um, I mean, he played... A, rather than like this, he'd sort of play it with his, his thumb. And that's another thing. So, um, you know, a lot of these old rock and rollers, these kind of low, low note um, six-string bass things, they did a lot with the thumb. You, you know, um kind of heard this idea. They kind of do that. So even ascending, um, you might just move like that. Um, that kind of thing. I think another one like that. Um, Got a B, A, a G sharp minor, F sharp minor, E. Um, what's the song? Uh, you know, Honey Don't, Carl Perkins. Um. <laughs> kind of squishy, just using the thumb. You, it's kind of clear, it's kind of unclear, it's just... 
But it's the, it's the, it's the rhythm. You know, people are like, they're just dripping with rhythm and that's what is coming across in all the solos, in the music, in the playing. And that's what's um, absolutely crucial. So just returning to this idea, um, 